Today's review, Macross 7, probably the most unique mech anime you'll ever see. Subscribe for daily spoiler-free anime reviews covering series on Fridays and movies or OVAs the rest of the week. Today's review covers Macross 7, Macross 7 Encore, Macross 7 Plus, Macross 7 The Movie, and Macross Dynamite 7. Also, if you haven't seen the original Macross anime from 1982, this review contains spoilers as it is its sequel. Macross 7 is the first direct continuation of the original Macross. I I know Macross Plus exists sooner chronologically, but Macross 7 is the first anime to include characters from the original series. The story begins 30 years after the original in a time where humans and Zentradi live together peacefully, traveling through space, spreading their roots across the galaxy. The new turtle-shaped Macross 7 is divided into two sections. The front half is Battle 7, the militaristic powerhouse which can detach and transform into robot mode just like the first Macross, and the back section, City 7 which is home to over a million inhabitants. The leader of these two sections are the two lovers from the original anime. Milia, the green-haired Myclone Zentradi, now mayor of City 7, and her husband Max, the blue-haired human pilot, now captain of Battle 7. Although their marriage made them cultural leaders, forging a path of peace and unity among human and Zentradi, they're currently at odds with each other while trying to maintain appearances for the sake of their society. One of the main characters is their daughter, Mylene. Mylene is well provided for due to her parents' high status, but is lonely due to her broken home and constant watchful eye of her bodyguard who prevent her from having a normal life. Thankfully, her aspirations of becoming a rock star pay off as she finds a new family in becoming the bassist and vocalist for Firebomber, the rock band consisting of the other main characters. Firebomber is like a family to her because the keyboardist Ray is basically a father figure. He's a wise, mature, and empathetic guy who always looks out for her. I really enjoyed his character because he felt a lot like Jet Black from Cowboy Bebop. Vifidius, the drummer, is like an older sister whose defining feature is that she is just over it. If it's not related to drumming or her band members, don't ask her, she doesn't care. In fact, she only speaks about three lines through the entire series, yet you never forget she's there because she's constantly drumming on things. Last but not least, Basara, the guitarist and lead singer, who's like Malene's older brother because they never stop fighting. He's hot-headed, eccentric, and irrational. Everyone follows his lead because they can't change his mind and they care too much about him to let him do anything alone. Although he's the star, it's hard to get him to show up for his own concerts. He arrives late and leaves early whenever battle breaks out. Not because he's part of the military or anything, but because he wants to sing to the enemy. After Minmay changed the course of universal history, singing inspired people in a way we've never seen before, especially for the Zentradi who were gifted in motion and culture as a result. What makes Macross 7 the most unique mech anime is its focus on pacifism and the importance of empathy. I know anti-war themes are common in mech anime, but that's always peace enforced through the barrel of a gun. However, Macross 7 features true pacifism. Basara sings to his enemies in hopes of forming a common bond between them. He aims to touch their heart with his music and in the war. He becomes outraged upon discovering rockets were installed in his machine and the few times he uses them are only to destroy the arms and legs of his enemy's mechs during a life or death situation. Instead of fighting, Basara takes a defensive approach by dodging rockets and using the pinpoint barriers discovered in the original anime to block incoming lasers. His mech has a gun, but it only fires speaker pods which lodge into enemies' cockpits playing music since sound can't travel through space. This basically makes Basara the first ever RPG mech tank as he taunts his enemies, attracting their fire and absorbing it. The only difference here is that he's also trying to convince the soldiers from his side to stop killing as well. The culture of war is much older than the culture of peace. Nevertheless, many aboard the Macross 7 understand and appreciate the idea of peace considering their leaders personally bridge the gap between humans and Zentradi. Still, it's the military bureaucrats Basara butts heads with the most. This creates an interesting dynamic of conflict within different factions in the Macross 7 as out-of-touch military experts cling to their old ways of seeing life as a number and using weapons of mass destruction. Like most conflicts of this nature, it pivots on lack of understanding, but unfortunately, the only one trying to understand the enemy is Basara, and everyone else is fighting out of fear.
However, their fears are substantiated as their enemies are an alien race who feed upon the spirit energy of cultured life forms. They're called vampires, which might be a turnoff to some, but this is only a loose phrase used in the absence of knowledge considering their traits. While I won't spoil what they really are, I will say that they are connected to an alien race I wanted to learn more about for many years, the protoculture. As we learned in the original Macross anime, Zentradi and humans were created by the ancient godlike protoculture 500,000 years ago. In my Macross Zero review, I complained that they didn't focus enough on protoculture out of ignorance of having never seen Macross 7, which actually came before that. Thankfully, the second half of this anime goes in-depth on ancient universal history and protoculture as they explore massive ancient shrines. Everything you probably think is strange about Macross, or especially Macross 7, is explained rationally in its second half. Why is singing so important? Why are human and Zentradi so different? Why were they even created, it answers everything. Like traditional Macross anime, Seven depicts large-scale war, though it's seen through a lens of tragedy instead of excitement in the earlier installments. Instead of badass explosions and mile-wide laser beams, we have the despair of countless lives lost due to sheer ignorance. As the battle intensifies, Basra rises to the occasion singing louder and gradually gaining a foothold in achieving his goal of ending the war through music. However, the ceiling is much higher than anyone expected. Macross 7 also stands out for its depiction of alien life in its second half. I can't say much, but I'd compare it to Gurren Lagann regarding its insurmountable threat of godlike life forms and how spirit is the only useful weapon. Last week, I praised the original Macross for obtaining the perfect balance between action, comedy, romance, drama, and character development. Thankfully, Macross 7 continues this trend as its slow-paced plot provides a great environment for gradual character development, the flourishing of complex love triangles and even humor. The main problem I had with Seven was its slow pacing for the first 14 episodes. It felt so bland and repetitive, and I imagine this is why most people drop the series. However, while the entire anime maintains a relatively similar level of pacing, it's never a problem once the accumulation of progress becomes visible. Now, I wouldn't say the first arc can't be improved, but everything most would find dull are just specks of paint that become more relevant as future layers are added. This slow pacing creates the appropriate atmosphere for low of great character interaction that truly make Firebomber feel like a family and makes the Macross 7 feel like a living city. The main characters are developed similarly to Cowboy Bebop through gradual indirect characterization followed by hard flashbacks later on in the series which put everything into perspective. Although I was initially bored for the first 10 or so episodes, I eventually found myself deeply connected to the main cast and even wanted to learn more about the side and tertiary characters. Through Basara, we learn about his fans and the aliens he gradually connects with with. However, I'd say Basra's greatest contributions to the narrative are his spirit, pacifist attitude, and the way he influences others. He's also caught up in various romantic situations as numerous characters fall in love with him, but he doesn't care at all. Instead, he just continues playing his music. I wish there were a bit more depth to his embrace of an angsty personality. Maybe this is intentional, but it seems like he's incapable of voicing his feelings unless it's in a song. There are numerous times he's silent or even defensive when he's asked to explain himself, but he makes new songs that perfectly voices emotions towards a certain situation or person. I suppose this is understandable considering it's easier for some to realize their true emotions after contemplation and writing things down in a journal. I guess his lyrics are kind of like his journal and I can appreciate that. Through Mylene, we experience an unorthodox love triangle that focuses more on her confused emotion and soul searching as a coming of age story rather than actual romantic encounters featured in the original Macross. While this may not be fulfilling in the traditional romance sense, I appreciated its subtlety and innocence considering Mylene's age. It's a confusing time for her, which is believably depicted in addition to her struggles with her divided family. I'm honestly on the fence between Ray and Mylene being my favorite character. Mylene has her struggles, but Ray is the kind of guy who quietly reflects on his problems and trauma of the past. He's had some pretty severe difficulties in his life that I won't spoil, but that only makes him feel more human when they're finally revealed. Years ago, before watching the anime, I thought Macross 7 would be be like G Gundam with Guitar Hero controllers, that it's some silly anime spitting in the face of the Macross legacy. However, I've come to understand that it's an anime that can have fun, dare to be different, and even detail its characters, even to the extent that we witness the internal struggles of a side character who's disgusted with himself after feeling jealous over the attention someone is getting as they're on the brink of death in the hospital. I came in expecting the anime to be a 6, and I believed it for the first 14 episodes. However, I came away considering 
rank Macross 7 to be a few directorial decisions shy of being a 9. In fact, I feel the gaping void left by a unique anime that no other show will ever fill. If I weren't an anime reviewer, I'd honestly start the anime over from episode 1. I know it's irrational because on paper there are many anime with more detailed characterization and development, but there's just something special to me about the characters in Macross 7. Maybe it's the slow pacing or the fact that I gave them three entire days of my life marathoning it, but I really do miss these characters and their vibrant personalities. I hope to see them again in the future Macross series, but I don't think that's likely. A few of the glaring problems preventing Seven from reaching the exalted status of being a 9 includes its boring introductory arc, ending, animation shortcuts, and execution of its additional content. I've already touched on its slow pace introduction, but I should address that the battles become more exciting and the band actually writes new songs. So if you're getting tired of hearing Planet Dance in the beginning, rest assured because I think their other songs are much better. I consider Macross 7 to have my favorite anime soundtrack. Fire Bomber performs all of the songs in the anime. Most of their lyrics pertain to something that's currently happening, so there's that emotional connection to character struggles, journey, and personality with each song, and I find myself listening to this outside of watching the anime. Even though I don't speak Japanese, I'm still reminded of the events that were going on in the anime, so it's like this touching experience that I have when listening to it. Regarding its ending, I enjoy the large-scale exciting climax, but it kind of just ends after they do the thing, leaving me longing for an afterstory considering its focus on character development and even slice-of-life aspects through the anime. As for the animation, there's a ton of reused footage, but I never felt like this cheapened the important bits, since for me, Macross 7 was more about its characters and themes rather than its action. Regarding its additional content, Macross 7 Encore and Macross 7 Plus would be better if integrated into the series considering they heavily focus on the main character's backstories. I highly recommend watching these anime around episode 40 and it doesn't matter which one you watch first. Macross 7 the movie is only 30 minutes long and was very enjoyable. It features Basara encountering a full-size Entrati who Minmei inspired. She sings on a seemingly deserted planet because her vocals create earthquakes due to her size and intensity. I really love this movie. It's optional but totally worth watching also around episode 40. My biggest complaint with its extra content is Macross Dynamite 7, considering it's chronologically the true conclusion to the series. For starters, it's written like an episodic adventure more than its rightful ending. It features Basara arbitrarily traveling through the galaxy and finding some random planet where people hunt space whales. Everything about D7 felt gratuitous and not in a good way. They brazenly included an attempted rape scene on a fan-favorite character that has absolutely zero connection to the plot. Then, they go ahead and include full body body nudity of some young Zentrani girl on the other planet. Who is this for? Is this not the conclusion to the 50 plus episode saga I just completed? To add insult to injury, its ending is even worse and inconclusive than the anime series, therefore Dynamite 7 adds nothing and I actually recommend skipping it. Macross 7 is a totally misunderstood anime with amazing potential and those who dropped it before episode 15 are honestly cheating themselves. As much as I enjoy this anime, I have to give it an 8 out of 10, which is still a great score, but sadly it had so much unrealized potential. Furthermore, I give all of its additional content an 8 out of 10 except Dynamite 7 which gets a 4. Macross 7 combines the limitless human spirit and immensely oppressive antagonist of Gurren Lagann with the aesthetics of the original Macross, the peaceful and empathetic morals of Star Trek The Next Generation with a central cast who feel and develop similar to Cowboy Bebop with the slower paced, relaxed approach of a slice of life anime. I recommend everyone who's finished the original Macross to watch this anime despite Despite how you think you'd feel about it, and everyone who dropped it before the halfway point, give it a second chance. Just to clarify, watch Macross 7, when you get to episode 40, watch Macross 7 Encore, Macross 7 Plus, and Macross 7 The Movie in any order. Then continue with the series. Skip Macross Dynamite 7 unless you're curious, but keep your expectations low. As far as Macross FB7, I haven't seen that yet due to its inclusion of Macross Frontier content. What are your thoughts on Macross 7? Did this review change your mind? Like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with a friend so more can experience the wonders of Macross 7 without being spoiled. Thanks to Nia-chan and all monthly supporters on Patreon and YouTube. I'll see you tomorrow with Detective Conan Movie 1 followed by Macross Frontier and on my second channel linked in the description, I began uploading episode reviews of seasonal anime series. Have a great day.